See there now? You can hear him. Hey, hey. We are live. Yes, yes. we are. <laughs> good evening. Yes, good evening. Uh, we're glad you decided to turn it, tune in to us instead of the uh, State of the Union address that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. If we had known that, uh, we would have... Uh, Still done this. Still done, still done this, <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, I would have done it when Trump was in. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's just rhetoric. Yeah. He so. already released it, according to... Oh, really? Yeah, that's what you told me. Oh, well, about the mask. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, now, um, if, you're, if you've been vaccinated, mm -hmm. I can't ask you if you've been vaccinated, unless you're an employee. No, I can't ask an employee. But if you've been vaccinated, you... You can walk around outside and talk to people as long as you stay six feet away from them. So it's 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 a, it's really great, great, uh, great. Yeah. So uh, I want to uh, this week we're going to continue with our English theme. Yeah. We talked about it last week, and we talked about how I I prefer if you would call me Squire and I'll call you Governor. All right, Squire. All right, Squire. Yep, and uh, and Governor and. Um, uh, because we're going to get into some English stuff, English monarchy stuff mm -hmm. tonight. So it's going to be really good. Um, but the big thing that's happening this week is happening tomorrow. Do you want to tell them? It's the NFL draft. That's right. That's right. Footy. Yeah, the kick yeah that's right. Football. Uh, American football. Uh, and that's I'm excited about it. It's I'm, the, it's, it's the uh, first thing that really kicks off. The rest of the football year. Yeah. And so it's once that happens, it's just pretty much downhill from there. Right. We're just giggling at baseball yeah. and basketball yeah. from that point on. Yeah. Uh, anybody else here a Patriots fan? No, Buff you're a Buffalo fan, aren't you? Buffalo. You can't be both. Uh, it's not the way it works. <laughs> Can you be both, and especially in the same division? Yeah. Are you hot or cold? Yeah. 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 There, you can't be that. So we're going to go Buffalo. Buffalo and Denise. Patriots got to be Atlanta. That's okay. I don't mind. As a Patriot fan, I don't mind you. <laughs> fan. Yeah. I have a sense of compassion for you. <laughs> well, so we're going to continue to talk about um, being learners, lovers, and leaders, and we're particularly leaning into lovers. Yes. And so we've talked about a lot of things. We won't go through it all, but uh, one of the things is that loving is a central part of being a disciple of Christ. But uh, he, he broke it out in Matthew, I mean in Mark, if you'll read that for mm -hmm. us. He kind of broke out our kind of um, uh, ecosystems or biomes that we're yeah. supposed to be experienced in love. Yeah. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Yeah, so... Um, first of all, I don't think Jesus was making things easier by reducing all the commandments down to three. Because when it comes down to it, those three are really the toughest things in, the, in life that you'll ever mm -hmm. have to deal with. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did a survey, and we mentioned that. We did a survey about eight years ago about what, which biome is harder to live in, to love in. And when asked, um, uh, people answered predominantly strongly with women that 
Loving yourself was the hardest place to love. Mm-hmm. That in this command that Jesus gives us, the part about loving your neighbor as yourself, meaning predicated based upon um, a healthy self-love in the uh, image of God, mm-hmm. that uh, that's the toughest part for most people. Uh, second, loving others was the one that uh, people found tough. Uh, predominantly men had a problem with loving others. We just Men just don't play well with, with others. Um, no. And then, but all three said that loving God was, of all of them, was, was the least difficult, mm-hmm. which, you know, I would, that's good to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a hard time, though, valuing ourselves and, and sometimes others. We have to answer the question, am I worth loving? Or, and, and here's a really weird way to put it, but are you worth love, you loving? Mm-hmm. I can hardly say so it, right? So weird. You yeah. Say are it. you worth you loving? I remember once on that Sunday, I delivered uh, this message, um, tw- you know, nine years ago, that I had everybody s- yell out, I love me some me, or something <laughs> oh, like that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 I had, I dared people to, uh, to say out loud at the top of their lungs, I love me. And I think we only had two people that dared to do it. We actually had a whole group who said that they felt it was unbiblical for them to do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like, unbiblical? I mean, so so God doesn't want you to have any feelings about yourself. And uh, But yet we find Jesus saying that how we feel about ourselves has something to do with how we will treat other people. So I thought it was really interesting that people got scared when when challenged with saying, I love me. And people were like, I, I just can't say that. It just seems wrong to say that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I was raised up. My mom was a sweet and blessed woman, and, and she had a great impact on me. But uh, she had some ideas about loving yourself. She conveyed to me that she loved me and that God loved me. But she was so concerned about vanity in me that I remember I asked her why she never fixed my teeth as a child. You know, we had a dentist, you know. And um, she told me that uh, she was concerned that I would become too vain and that they had decided to leave my teeth the way they are. I mean, they're wicked, crowded and all. But she was concerned of vanity so much that she was willing to withhold correcting my teeth. Mm. And it all came back to the self-love issue. I think my mom had some real, it was difficult to self-love. She was an amazing singer, sounded just like Judy Garland. I actually have a recording of her. She made a record back in uh, 1938, I believe it was. And I have the recording of her singing and it sounds just like Judy Garland. Hmm. But one of the problems that she had with advancing her career was the issue of self-love. So, and felt like all that was any attention being brought to yourself was vanity. So I think we've all had problems with it. Uh, But in order to start talking about this, do we have value, we need to really figure out where we get our value from. And we talked last week Mm -hmm. about intrinsic derived and contrived value. I won't go through all of it again, but it's pretty heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God created is not just a statement of process, but really a statement of value. And it's, it's, I love that. The fact that God is like saying, hey, I created you. It's like, here's how you got here. And that's not saying, God's not trying to communicate some scientific formula on how he pulled off Homo sapiens on planet Earth, but rather when he's, when he's communicated in the beginning, God, through the spirit of God, created all things. He's, he's imparting value, not mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we miss it. But he didn't only just do value, did he? He, No. I mean, because everything, he created everything, but we found out that things don't have equal value. Mm -hmm. So um, read a little bit about what he said. This is coming from Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Okay, now that's cool. He says, I'm giving you a piece of my intrinsic value. We learned about that last week, that God has intrinsic value. He doesn't, he's not contingent. He's... Uh, he has value in himself. He doesn't derive it from our worship or anybody else. So he has, but so he's going to create us with the stuff of intrinsic value, mm-hmm. and let them rule 
God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. So his image carried value. Uh, something distinctive from just birds, plants, and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, but also, he said that we r rule. So his, his um, blessing conveys royal authority with it, mm. which I don't think most of us ever um, kind of think of ourselves in a mm -hmm. sense of royalty, but we'll find that Paul talks a lot about that. Mm -hmm. We derive our value from the intrinsic value of God. I think that's, I think that's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. I... I don't know about you guys, but I I rely on this every every single day. I rely on getting my value from God, because all the other things that I use to contrive value from, they just come up short. Mm -hmm. They really just don't do the job. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So. No, I'm right there with you. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about the um, uh, w w uh, something that we've been using here a lot at Crosstown mm -hmm. for the last couple of years is they're really, really into the love triangle. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so we're going to be talking. There you go, the love Ooh. triangle here at Crosstown. <laughs> yeah, so, so let, let us explain what the love triangle is. But let me just say at, at the segue mm -hmm. that if you ever have any questions about what we talk about, uh, feel free to put out comments. Um, I watch the comments to see what, if anybody's got any questions out there. Um, also, if you have any questions about, you know, what does Crosstown as a church believe about something? Mm -hmm. We would love you to, to email info at crosstownchurch.com and just let us know what your questions are. Maybe you've got, you know, hey, what's the church's stand on, on, um, uh, uh baptism, you mm -hmm. know, um, yeah. Oh, why do you baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? What yeah. is your stand on uh, should wear, women wear veils? Uh, what's your stand on? I mean, people have been asking me a lot about that one. Yeah, I was going to say that email came in. Yes, it is. It was about, about Stacy. About, about teaching. About, yeah. Oh, about yeah. Stacy's teaching. Yeah. 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 And uh, talking about uh, can women be teachers at a church mm -hmm. uh, can women be pastors? and it's really interesting is and we won't go into it tonight but um the, the idea is you, you really have to clarify what is the real thing that paul's trying to teach there mm -hmm. uh, because if women are remain silent in the church as we could extract that one line then basically from the parking lot to the pew and back again we shouldn't be hearing any female voice mm -hmm. and we know paul's not communicating that um we see that uh we we don't have don't know of any church in the world that has a prohibition against women teaching children or working in the nursery or a prohibition against women singing from the platform so uh it's kind of funny how we all kind of nudge the application and so uh but that's see that's a subject that we'll, we'll go into matter of fact we might give some time at the beginning of this time that we have together to if somebody sends in a question about what do we believe on something that we'd like to address that so, so that'd be pretty cool mm -hmm. um so uh we'll see what comes in if you don't ask then we probably won't do it mm -hmm. um if you don't ask and you leave the church because you don't believe what crosstown believes uh that's wrong i mean i'm just gonna so. tell you straight up i believe I, be I believe that <laughs> you know if, if the script is very clear if you have ought against your brother mm -hmm. uh and not all Differences in doctrine are oughts, you know. I love King James. Mm. You know, it just sounds, you know. But it, it's like not all doctrines are equal. There are some things that we we like, like the end times, the mm -hmm. the millennial reign of Christ, the mark mm -hmm. of the beast. When will the rapture occur? Um, uh, the Lord's Supper, mm. uh, things like that. There's a lot of theological variants on it that we decided to cross down. We would, as long as it was not a core doctrine mm -hmm. maybe a, a core doctrine would be something like the nature of who christ was mm -hmm. uh, or the nature of salvation right. how does that occur and how has that been accomplished for mankind but other than that you know um if you want to believe that jesus was the only child that mary and joseph had or really mary had but there wasn't more children see catholics believe in the ever virginity of mary yeah mm -hmm. she was forever a virgin um there's nothing to support that biblically. There are some references to his brothers and sisters in the Gospels, but Catholics believe that that's a reference to cousins. Um, you know, uh, 
that would put me in trouble because I kissed one of my cousins. Because <laughs> okay, that means I kissed my sister. <laughs> and it didn't feel like my it sister. It didn't feel like my sister. Though I never did kiss my sister to know the difference. So I just knew it wasn't my sister. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. So if you have any questions, um, people just leave and go elsewhere. And, and it's just like, no, nah, it's not. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's, let's mm-hmm. grow up and... And yeah. so ask us questions. We love questions. I have studied all my life to answer questions. Nobody asked me a question. That's really crazy. It's so disappointing. It's it's so like, disappointing. Why did you ask me that? A lot of people are like, well, we thought you'd get angry. I mean, what? <laughs> I'm like, where'd you get that idea? Well, last week you said you wanted to fight somebody in the parking lot. <laughs> you were an inch away. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just say, fight. I will not fight anybody over doctrine. You know, we'll have some great conversation. Love it. So let's yeah. get back to our love triangle. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the love triangle, and let, let me show you what, it, what I'm talking about. We came up with this years ago. And this is the love triangle. Is I think this is the right. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm at, yeah, I'm at the right way. We got everybody say hi to Brian over there. He's uh, Hey there. Yeah, hey, Brian. So uh, this is our love triangle. And uh, what we came up with this idea is that when we think about value and belonging um, and what makes us have that sense of worth is that we start with belonging and then it flows from the belonging to God. It flows down into our identity Mm -hmm. out of our new identities because of our belonging. And again, this is all flowing down from starts with God. It's a a top to bottom uh, solution. Um, that out of our identity, we begin to experience empowerment because of what Christ did for me, what he accomplished for me. Out of that, now I'm empowered. This is absolutely imperative Mm -hmm. that his image, his blessing, and his family, that real value flows from belonging to God. And then that's where your identity comes from. And then once your identity is established, then you begin to experience empowerment in your life. Mm-hmm. It's our association and relationship with God that that makes the whole th- that changes everything, mm-hmm. and it's uh, a value system that leads to empowerment. Mm-hmm. But there's another triangle here at at Crosstown, and it's not just here at Crosstown, but it's in the world, and this is one that we're all pretty much familiar with. We've done it before. It's it's what I call the toxic triangle. Oh, you, you got a little uh, airbrushed arrows on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted to make them kind of like oh. like uh, radicals, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. not going to play straight, you know. We're going <laughs> to radical. Uh, and they change the color and, yeah, and all oh, that yeah, to kind of yeah. give it emphasis. Black. But, yeah, so what this is, the toxic triangle, and you're very familiar with it. You don't, you don't even need to see it. Mm-hmm. Is that you seek empowerment to establish your identity, and then use your identity to try to contrive belonging, mm-hmm. okay? Um, you, uh, and, and this is how mankind runs. This is the triangle of mankind, is that we try to get stuff or empowerment to be, have identity. Okay, I'm a doctor. I go to get an education so I can become a doctor so that I can have wealth so that I can be a leader in my community, you know? And, we, and we, we do all this stuff. We seek empowerment to establish identity. Um, I'm the best. Now I belong. Mm-hmm. And this goes on a lot in a family. And in, in a broken family, kids can get caught into this toxic triangle. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's the thing. It's, you know, my brothers, I, I don't think any of them competed with me. Uh, I don't know if they had this already figured out or they just didn't see me as a threat, (laughs) which probably was the case. Um, But I always felt that I needed to win or do something to separate myself from my brothers so I could have identity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me just say, think a couple things. I'm the only one in my family that's, I think that's over six foot tall. Uh, and that became important to me. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, everybody would be like, oh, who, it's different know, up here. The tall one. Yeah. 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 And then I'm the only one that didn't have brown eyes. Um, I have the blue hazel eyes. Oh. And so I got them apparently from my grandmother. So I was the only one with freckles. So height, freckles, and blue eyes became my identity. 
mm-hmm. really. It was it was kind of like it was very important to me that that I maintained these things. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> it's I'm nothing maker. without this, yes. you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that's why you know I went to the doctors today and got some biopsies. I have some little basal cancers in there gonna cut them off and i'm like it's my identity man don't be, don't be screwing with it it's, it's who i am you know but that's the thing what what we do and and i'm not the only crazy person there's no. a lot of people that went and got a college degree not because they were in pursuit of understanding the universe around them but rather to secure the tools of empowerment to create identity mm-hmm. and then once creating a sufficient identity to then establish belonging Mm -hmm. and so we work this negative um toxic triangle Mm -hmm. matter of fact there's an example of one that's in scripture of the toxic triangle it's and and here's the thing it literally is a triangle (laughs) okay so this story you think about well you know you have these crazy triangle pictures like no this story actually is is in the scriptures and it actually involves um, a triangle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it comes to us out of Genesis 11, and it's the familiar story of the toxic triangle known as the Tower of Babel. Mm-hmm. Why don't you read it to us? Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, "Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly." And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. See, Mm -hmm. they were literally making this triangle. Mm -hmm. Now, I I know you're wondering, well, wait a minute, they were making a tower, and for a lot of us, we visualize like a ladder or something, or maybe some sort of spiral thing. But um, in ancient cultures like Mesopotamia and Babylon, uh, Bab- um, Babylon, <laughs> Babylon. Mesopotamia and Babylon. <laughs> Babylon 5. It, it was a sci-fi thing oh, I was oh, into. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but here's the thing. This is called a ziggurat, okay? Um, so <laughs> it's also known as a German cigarette. Uh, ziggurat. Didn't make it through the first one. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Brian, keep an eye on the feed. See if we get any German feedback. They've been look- oh, they've you've been just been this- banned in Germany. Uh, they- they've been looking to launch another war. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's so wrong. Okay. But, but so this is what they built. Okay, when we think in our minds, what is it that the Tower of Babel looked like? It looked like this. Okay, this is a four-sided triangle. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, each side of it is a triangle. So they decide that they're going to build something to make a name for for themselves, and they're going to climb up it. They're literally crawling up the triangle, the toxic triangle. They're using their empowerment, and it was all talked about in there. Let us use, uh, let's burn the bitum, bit, bitumen, bit, bitumen and, yeah. and mortar yeah. and all the stuff, and let's make brick for ourselves, empowerment, you know, identity, make a name for ourselves, and let us ascend, and boom. So, they, But here's the thing. They are not trying to, uh, when they say, come let us make a name for ourselves, they are not looking to make a name for themselves among men, but a name for themselves among gods. Mm. You see, in ancient culture, there were two environments or ecosystems, and I know I'm using that a lot, but or maybe even topography, mm-hmm. that the ancients believed that the gods inhabited. One was gardens. They believed that the, the gods would always visit gardens, Mm -hmm. but they also believed that gods lived on mountains. So what we have here is we have them constructing a human mountain. That's what ziggurats were. So when the Babylonians, it's funny, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the world at the time, but they also had a ziggurat. So what they were doing was creating habitats for the gods. And, but it, in this story, the Tower of Babylon, let us make a name for ourselves. And they want to ascend up and make a name for themselves among the gods. And they want to live on the mountain. Mm-hmm. So this is a real statement. But it also is a statement from what we're saying is that they know that the place where value 
is received or, or, or assigned is in the heavenlies. Mm-hmm. But they are going to climb their way up there in order to do it. And now, how many kids do you know that go through this? They build mm-hmm. ziggurats. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, you got you got yeah. two boys. Yeah, they they battle each yeah. other for your attention, for your affirmation. Oh yeah, I was telling you earlier. When it comes to my youngest one, he uh, wakes up with dry underwear. It is a celebration for him. Okay, you, know, you can see it on his face. My underwear is dry, and we great job, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> and so it's uh, motivating for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, trying to, you know, and then to kind of get there to that place where you will say something good about Mm -hmm. him. Or Alice on a video game when he beats a level by himself. Yeah. It's always high five, celebrate. Yeah. He's very disappointed when he doesn't beat it. It's a level. Yeah. See, it's a digital ziggurat. Mm. So the more he climbs up levels, the more Mm. he feels valuable about himself. The more we climb up the corporate ladder, the ziggurat, you know. I mean, we really do have these all over the place. Mm -hmm. And we kind of feel in order to, I got to be empowered to create identity. When I create identity, I can have belonging. Mm -hmm. I can show them. And I think, you know, being a family of of eight and uh, seven of us being boys, there was that competition to get the approval of our father. And I, I think for Pop, you had to figure out what his ziggurat was. What yeah. did Pop value in order to get Pop to, to give you value? That's early on. Mm-hmm. He, he discovered Christ in his life and became an incredible man uh, the last, like, 10, 15 years of his life. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I think he got to the um, – but we had to figure out – if you had to work on the car with him. You had to – you know, put his tools away. You had to do what Pop wanted. You had to go fishing with him, even if you didn't like fishing. And I spent years fishing with Pop, not because I love fishing, but because I wanted I wanted to be on his ziggurat, mm-hmm. and that was his thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, so this isn't just something new for the modern man. It's not like what's happened to humanity. We're so self centered or we're so humanistic. It's like no, we've been building ziggurats so that we can prove. That we're good enough. Yeah, and it's I see people too. They want to identify with certain things, like say a big movement or mm-hmm. something, just to get and to get identity in that right association. Absolutely, uh, I see that a lot. You can. Yeah, I I think careers. Mm-hmm. People will choose careers because they are esteemed by our culture better than other ones. Um, you know, uh, education. Mm-hmm. People will get education, and that's a cigarette I've always had a problem with because, you know, I never could stay in school long enough without, you know, getting in trouble or dropping out. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like, wow, I always struggled in my self-value on the issue of education, wealth, uh, physical prowess. I have no problem there, but no, um, but that's that, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, but but seriously, some people. Live in that gym. Live in the gym, not because... <laughs> it's good for them. <laughs> no, because they're trapped. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, you know, that treadmill is a ziggurat. Yeah. I, now, I'm not downplaying good health, but for, for a lot of people, for me, yeah. you know, I was in the gym because it's, it's like, man, you got to look your best. You got to be in shape. You want to be a... I, you'd work out all year just so that you can take your shirt off <laughs> at the beach. Yeah. I mean... Oh, oh! Yeah, and it's like... <laughs> And, you know, oh, and I'm know. out there with my pale, white, freckled skin, <laughs> you know, all six foot one of it. It's like people are putting on blinders, you know, but it's like so it, it is it's yeah. ridiculous. i tell you another one. One of the worst ziggurats ever created is I don't want to say this the wrong way, but let's just say toxic religion because I don't want to demonize religion. People say, "Well, I'm not religious. I'm just spiritual." And it's like, <laughs> and so <laughs> where's your that. cigarette at? It, it's kind of like my <laughs> wife and I were arguing. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like me and my wife had an argument over. Um, I, seriously, we had an argument today, and it was over the pronunciation of who was. What was she saying? Croissant. 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 Is that what you say, Brian? Croissant. 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 And I'm like, oh, please. No, but she says not. So I actually Wikipedia did. <laughs> With the dictation thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yo, know, and I'm playing it. Well, apparently the, the English say it, the 
UK says it different than the Americans say it. Well, we say croissant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's like, it's kind of like Patton going through Germany. Yeah. Croissant. <laughs> you know, it's like, bang. He's mad. Yes. <laughs> oh, we are. I got you, croissant. <laughs> yeah, you can't oh, say, yeah. I got you, croissant. <laughs> you know, I mean. Unless you're mocking. They might think you're mocking them. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, yes. <laughs> the, and, and so I, I'm like, she said, no, croissant is the right way. I said, wait a minute. Look where you are. I said, where are you? She goes, with you. I'm like, that's not what I mean. You, I said, you're in America. Okay. You say America? I don't give a flip how the I'm French say it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I went into that whole thing. I sounded like Tim Allen from <laughs> Tool Man or Donald Trump or somebody. <laughs> I, I, mean, all, I just kind of like wigged out for a second. I was just like, but I'm like, it's America and it's croissant. Matter of fact, I think we should call it crescent. Because I like crescent rolls. So I'm telling you what, the Pillsbury Doughboy, he's pretty making America great again, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I really, oh, we right went on there. to it. Now, yeah. the next thing I know, she's up, she's walking out the door. <laughs> hey, could you uh, get me another cup of coffee? <laughs> and a zig of hat? Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> I hope she's watching tonight. <laughs> but um, I got into all that because of, toxic religion mm -hmm. and i do not see how that's connected at all but i will tell you this i was raised catholic yeah and i'm not villainizing catholics but catholic catholicism has a real lean towards uh toxic triangle stuff mm -hmm. you know if you do these things if you say three hail marys and an our father and an act of contrition i mean you have the rosary beads you gotta move your hand down a bead next bead you know about oh, and having how to be done like kidney cut like will be done you gotta change your, <laughs> oh, your voice, change your voice. <laughs> hail mary for the grace of the lord's good day i mean all all cool stuff yeah. i mean yeah. i get it but you know i can tell you that there's a gazillions of catholic trained and raised people like myself in parochial schools that uh, did never had intimacy with what the meaning of the Our Father was. Yeah. You yeah. know? Uh, we felt like if we had to go to church, because if we didn't, it was a mortal sin. There was holy days of obligation. You know? It's like, <laughs> wow. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. that's a new covenant, huh? <laughs> that's is really good. You know? We, we got priests again. We got yeah. robes again. And we got a lot more rules now. It's like... <laughs> What's uh, new yeah. about this? <laughs> <laughs> the croissants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we'll be getting information from our <laughs> a letter from our German Catholic yes. friends. <laughs> yes. Maybe the French too. Yeah, the, but. <laughs> I'm ostracizing. You know, I just did Italy. Uh, the French and the Germans. All people. Groups. We're at war. Yeah. Defcon Five people. <laughs> yep. So, um, but. You can get caught up thinking that if I keep my promise to God, he will love me. Oh, yeah. And Protestants do that, too. You know, if I go to church, if I serve, if I if I don't cuss, you know, if I, I make a promise like I'll never look at porn again, then God will love me. And if I have, like, five good weeks of not drinking alcohol or getting drunk or whatever, it's like you start to feel better about yourself. Like, you're really – then you're a good Christian – yeah, you know, there's no such thing as a good Christian. I mean, it's kind of like you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, you know? You're um, in or out. Yeah, it, it's, it's all got, it's got good days, it's got bad mm -hmm. days. And if you don't buy, believe that, people will say that they disappoint, that they feel God is disappointed with them. Or they'll go as far as to romanticize that every time they sin, that, you know, Jesus has a tear coming down his oh, eyes because tear. Yeah. I broke his heart. I yeah. broke his heart. You know, like the deity of God is dependent on my ziggurat performance mm -hmm. in order for him to have a good day or not. Yeah. And it's like, come on. You know, uh, that's why Jesus said, hey, don't make any promises and don't swear. So you, you know, And it's like, why? It's because like, I know you're going to break your promise. I'm not asking you to make a promise. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to believe in me, follow me, trust in me. But I'm not asking you to make promises. But a lot of religions will be like these uh, the assertions of promises and then promises broken. Then you got to go to confession. You go in there and then he gives you absolution. And then once you got your absolution, you can climb up the ziggurat and you can get communion. Hmm. And then you're now infused with a new righteousness. And now you are a, a, a good child of God. It's like that's a that's a bad system. Yeah. 
you know. So uh, I think we all do it. I, I mean, Baptists do it as much as, mm-hmm. as Catholics do it, you know. Um, we seek empowerment to make a name for ourselves. And I think we do it so that we can have identity, so that we can have belonging. Mm-hmm. And then we hope that once we get belonging, that it will give us value. You know what's really funny about about people in general? Is that once you achieve a level of be- identity and belonging, everybody else hates you. Mm-hmm. You know? You think, well, you know, I'm going to achieve, I'm going to do good, I'm going to arrive, I'm going to make some money, I'm going to do some, you know, and it's like, you know, it's like Tom Brady. You know, it's like, a guy hasn't proven himself other than being a really cool guy, mm-hmm. you know, good person, you know, and, and, uh, um, but I just love to hate the guy, mm-hmm. you know, the bigger his identity, the more trophy he gets, the more I hate him. Mm-hmm. It's like, why? It's because one, that's what we do. And he, he left you and he left me. Yeah. And, but the idea that, well, if I get <clears throat> belonging, then everybody's going to love me. You're going to find out now. Yeah. Like, uh, the Adele thing with her losing weight. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a lady. That gets healthy, yeah, by dropping weight, mm-hmm. and then she gets <laughs> shamed, yeah, by by, by the <laughs> by people who are overweight, yeah, yeah, and it's like, <laughs> wait a minute, she wasn't saying that that yeah. uh, being overweight isn't beautiful. She was saying, listen, I you know I got a heart issue, or I got things to deal with here. Who's the other guy, Jonah? Jonah uh, Hill. Jonah Hill. Yeah, he uh, he too lost weight, and people shamed him for it. Yeah. So if we think that achieving belong uh, identity and then belonging rising to I- uh, a place of belonging um, is going to get us value from the people around us, we're just mm-hmm. you'll find that it doesn't really work. Um, so um, what I'm finding is that the way it works with God is almost kind of like the bring British monarchy, um, Governor. Mm-hmm. Uh, that value you, is restored in our lives with the association with someone of the royal family. Uh, I think this really, anyone who walks with Christ experiences that sense of restored, divine, uh, derived value into their lives. Mm-hmm. They kind of feel like that. I think when they were around Jesus, when they walked with Jesus, there was that sense of divine value that he gave them or restored in them. Mm-hmm. And... Um, even people who didn't know. Remember the guy that was healed that was blind? And they said, who who, who healed you? And uh, his circum- the circumstance of his healing was that Jesus told him to go wash his eyes in the, in the, in the pool, and then, you know, he would be healed. And, and that's what happened. So he never saw Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so the guy says, I don't, I don't, I've never seen him. I don't know who he is, but all I know, I, once I was blind, but now I see. Mm-hmm. And it was just being around Jesus and, and, and being affected by Jesus restored some sort of human dignity to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's kind of like how it is with the royal family. You remember Kate Middleton, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. she's married to uh, Prince William. Mm-hmm. But because it, it, her name is Kate William. Uh, uh, I mean, Kate. <laughs> Kate William. Kate, <laughs> they take the but, first name over there. <laughs> but, but, her name is Kate Middleton. Yeah. Uh, but when she marries Prince William, she becomes Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge. Hmm. Governor? Oh, Squire, that sounds way better. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, ex- that's exactly what happens. Yeah. See, because of her relational association with royalty, mm-hmm. it changes her identity and her belonging. Okay? That's exactly what happens with us with Christ. When we identify with Christ... Who is who is Lord and King? It it we he imparts his royal identity to us. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly enough, if William does become king, if the if the old gal finally gives up the ghost, <laughs> and doesn't outlive her great grandchildren. <laughs> We're I trying. Can, I can all see. of Europe is getting <laughs> ostracized in one podcast. <laughs> oh man! But um, <laughs> when William becomes king, her identity changes even again. She will become anybody want to shout it out? Queen. No, that was a good guess. Uh, Queen Consort. Queen Consort, yes. Uh, Pretty cool, huh? All Mm -hmm. of a sudden went from Duchess to Queen Consort. Mm -hmm. And now my wife's probably going to type something, and she'll be like, wow, this is really cool, because we're into uh, Jane Austen now. Uh, But but the idea is identity changes through association, 
And that's how it happens in the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. is that when we enter into relationship with Christ, that our identity is changed. Um, our association with God begins to lessen our needs, need of association or exasperating ourselves, trying to get um, uh, value from other sources, mm -hmm. like from our spouse. Your spouse can only give you so much. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some times when I know Susan's looking for something from me that I know she knows I can't give her. Mm -hmm. You know, on those bad days, we all are kind of like, you want your wife to be able to, you know, make you feel better about yourself. Or, you know, the kids to feel, you know, you want your kids' achievements to make you feel better. Or, But so the moment that you begin to experience this derived value from association with Christ, everybody else that you're, you love gets to live free because they don't have the burden of trying to fill you up with value. Mm -hmm. And that's mm. a real gift mm -hmm. where little kids can be little kids with their dad instead of... They don't have to be the best t-ball player. Absolutely course, not. They player, may not even singer. like t-ball. I know. How many kids got forced into... No, there's probably something I'll learn. It's good for probably organized sports, especially, right. to teach you things. Yeah. But beyond that, yeah, but <laughs> how I mean, many kids were made to play something? Right, right. Like and, piano. <laughs> right. I, oh, you want I can top that. Every one of us were required to take accordion lessons. <laughs> oh, is that little... <laughs> 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 um, papa, <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, oh, papa, papa, papa. I'm going to tell you what. Ah, mozzarella. I mean, if... <laughs> If, uh, I mean, if Peter Frampton had been up there with an accordion, I maybe mean, I would have bought yeah, into it. You yeah, know? name one famous accordion Zeppelin player. Zeppelin comes out. Uh, you yeah, know? Not, but no, there was no accordions up no. there. What about know? that thing they make you learn in elementary school? Oh, the, the recorder. Recorder. Yeah. There, <laughs> what kind of name is that? <laughs> recorder. Yeah. And who was actually good at that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> when you establish association yeah. with God. I would say that the trickle-down effect be affects the other people you live with because then they're free from your need to give them value. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, the greatest gift a man can give to his wife is the gift, and it's going to sound crazy, of 20 pounds. It's like that there's no reason why a woman in the world should have to be concerned about gaining 20 pounds with her husband mm -hmm. as if if I gain 20 pounds, I'm going to lose his love. Mm -hmm. And there are all kinds of people and nut pastors that will tell you, wives, you got to be sexy for your husband. Keep him from fornicating or looking at <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. pornography. I'm serious. Like this. Yeah, yeah. Like the burdens on you to look. It's like, no, no, that's crazy. That's a trap. <laughs> yeah. That's I, I, that guy got fired. He did? Yeah. I saw he apologized. Did he, he apologize? He, he should have apologized to his wife. <laughs> I'm sure it's Golly. probably. Hopefully that's where it started. <laughs> yeah. But my point is, yeah. the royalty of Christ begins to enable you to set people free mm -hmm. from having to please you. Mm -hmm. This is what I believe the Apostle Paul is doing when he makes this kind of like radical statement. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you read it for us? Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of the false circumcision. For we are the true circumcision who worship in the spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Yeah. So I, I think he's being very clear. He's like, beware of this, this false sense of, of contrived value. Mm -hmm. I, uh, that physical distinction means absolutely nothing. That confidence in social identity uh, changes nothing of lasting significance. Um, and so people need to realize, uh, you know, uh, whether it's circumcision in a religious performance or a tattoo. Sometimes people feel better about themselves because they get a tattoo and they identify themselves with something, you know, the Navy or mom or whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> mom. A club, a sticker, a jersey. I'm a, I was just very much the same way. Oh, yeah. I mean, like when I put stickers on the back of my, my 4x4, I lay them out just perfectly. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, I put my mountain bike stickers there and I put if I climb a certain mountain, I put that sticker on there. And because when you're riding, be, uh, you know, behind me, uh, because that's the way it's going to be, 
When you're right, when you're oh. right, yeah, because uh, you know, V8, you're seeing. No, 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 I'm just saying that when you cuckoo in your head, you're always trying to be ahead of everybody else. <laughs> but you want sometimes those stickers become my identity. Yeah, it's like I want people to see that when I get out of the car, he's like, "Oh, that dude mountain bikes. Oh, yeah. that guy owns a specialized. Oh, he's part of uh, the Lexus racing division. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and it's like it's never ending. Yeah. It's never ending. Yeah. I love that other verse that Paul said, and I think he's still talking about this, um, his move, his personal move from, um, in, or really his move from where he derives his value. Why yeah. don't you read that for us? Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, which, so he would have had the Torah, first five books of the Bible memorized. Yeah. yeah Insane. This guy, yeah, this so, guy's an action hero. Action hero, yeah. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. Okay, so Paul had all these sources of contrived value that anybody could ever want, particularly a Jewish person. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, listen, I had all this stuff. I had the education. I had the pedigree. I have had all this stuff. And we're beginning to find he's, he's going to take all that contrived value because he knows it has no eternal value. And he's going to turn it all on its head. Let's continue. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Yeah, I love that gain to me. Yeah. I, to me, the, in my mind, that picture of the ziggurat. Yeah. You know, anything that would elevate my game, elevate my game, elevate my game above other people, that pyramid, that, that tower of Babel, mm -hmm. that would set, make a name for myself uh, and give me the authority of the gods. Mm -hmm. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish so that I might gain Christ and may be found in him not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. Right. Um, now, let me be very clear. This is not some fanatical martyr that's uh, preparing to die or, you know, like he's he's making this announcement tied to a post and they're starting to light the fires, so he's making all these like, yeah. pronouncements. And this isn't a guy who's rejecting his culture, that he's now... Um, saying I'm not Jewish anymore, or I'm, or I'm not uh, a Pharisee anymore, or I'm not a, I mean, we are male and female. We are, you know, Irish and Italian, white and black. And so he's just saying that these are not the, the elements of distinction from which I get my, my value. He's putting everything in its proper place. I always go back to the creation story. When God brings all the animals before Adam and Eve, and he's empowered them, with, with he, God has named Adam and Eve. He brings all the animals and, and allows Adam to begin to name the animals mm -hmm. because that's what a, a giving out value is, is what image bearers do because that's what God did. Yeah. So now the animal kingdom is supposed to be getting value from humanity. We're supposed to be speaking into in our care of nature, the care of the, the earth and all those things. There is some biblical root in our responsibility to that. But, but there was a point when, when Adam is naming things. But we find out after the fall, Adam begins to use things to name him. Hmm. He starts to use his career to name him, his, what he drives to name him, what he... You know, what his success is, his mild time, whatever it is. And that's what Paul's rejecting. He's not saying that I'm not a Hebrew. I'm not a person who knows the law. He's just saying, listen, I'm not letting that stuff name me. I consider all those contrived definitions of who I am um, fall secondary uh, to knowing Christ. Mm -hmm. I consider them loss compared to mm -hmm. knowing Christ. Mm -hmm. And so this is a man beginning to recognize the difference between things and where he gets his value. And that's where that kind of brings us to this kind of closing moment about asking ourselves, where do we get our value from? Uh, do you get your value from your marriage? Well, let me ask you this. What if it fails? And oh, I've had that happen. All mm -hmm. of a sudden you find yourself a divorcee. 
all of a sudden you're one moment you're standing out the aisle saying that you know this is a unique love nobody has ever seen a love like ours i had the love of my, my life. This thing that's the oh, I love it. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know who it was. I forgot. Yeah. That song was big um, when I was dating Susan. Yeah. yeah. And we kind of felt like that song was written for you. And then, you know, if you're like me, you find yourself five years later and you're divorced. And, and no longer going to the young married couple at your church. Hmm. And now you're in the Singles Again <laughs> ministry. Okay? Did they say, it wasn't called, called Singles Again. Singles Again. again. Oh. Yes. <laughs> singles it was like singles. Again. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, again. yeah. It's like, <laughs> and their logo was a retreaded tire. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. We used to when they were doing bonfires at the beaches, the young Marys. We'd all be standing around a trash can and putting rubber tires into it. <laughs> no, seriously. So, oh my goodness. So if you get your value from your marriage, yeah. and all of a sudden your spouse leaves you, mm-hmm. um, what do you think about yourself? What do you think about your value at that point? Yeah. Um, are we getting our value from our children? Yeah. Well, they get married, and they go. They leave. Yeah. And not only that, if you raise them healthy, they, they have this attitude that we're going to be better than mom and dad. <laughs> and it's like, you know, we're going to. Oh, yeah. And not because they're jerks. Ireland's already feeling that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not because they're jerks, but because, you know, that's the natural way, you know. Yeah. We just kind of like want to build off of that yeah. uh, sounds like a cigarette to me yeah, but yeah. um uh how about are we getting our values from our jobs or the gym mm-hmm. you know the gym i cannot tell you how much and i know you think i'm making this up but i've spent more time in a gym than any than other than a church and that's since i've been a christian mm-hmm. Uh, and my my home, oh. <laughs> I think I've spent more time in a gym. Yeah, um, I've I will be willing to say this, boy. Uh, you people better like me out there. No, I don't. <laughs> no, that's right. I don't depend on that anymore. I'm not putting that pressure no, on no. that. No, no. Is I uh, I have looked into a mirror more than I've looked into anything else, mm. I, and I don't think I'm alone. I think we spend a lot of time looking in. Into yeah, a, and how a many mirror. mirrors are in a gym? Yeah. Pretty much all mirrors. <laughs> oh, it's all mirrors. And then uh, how many mirrors are on your car? Oh, yeah. You know, have you ever been driving down the road and you'd see that mirror in the center of the car? And usually, uh, you hope it's at least a woman. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but the, the mirror's turned, and you know they're not looking backwards. You know, yeah. you come to a light, and all of a sudden, you know, they're up there looking at each other, at themselves or something yeah. like that. It's like, we all do it. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to walk past a mirror and not look at yourself. But yeah. um, are we getting our value from our victimization? Mm. That's a weird one. But I think it, it, sometimes we do. Mm-hmm. Is that I, I feel a sense of belonging. Like, wow, this is my ziggurat. This is what makes a name for myself. I was a victim. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, are, that's prominent in the generation upcoming in youth right now. Is really? victim identity. Mm. Wow. Yeah. To take identity in that because it, it draws a lot of attention mm-hmm. when you're a victim. Wow. It brings a lot of attention to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I guess that, I guess that would. All you got to do is watch, <laughs> just watch the news about it. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. that's what motivates all the cancel culture stuff mm-hmm. and everything. It's a There's a lot of victim identity in that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, are we getting our value um, from our il- illness? Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's another one. You know, it's like the sicker I stay, the the more Susan gives me attention. Mm-hmm. Um, I can get somebody else. Especially to if you're like me, yeah, we're kind of pitiful when we're sick. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Men are all pitiful when they're sick. <laughs> I mean, a woman can be balancing a child on one side, <laughs> driving to school, have a runny nose, and then going to work. Right. And then we're we got that big <laughs> sick bottle on our heads, and, you know, and we're just like, can you the turn the bag. TV a little bit more this way? <laughs> oh yeah, guys are. Oh yeah, yeah. we are. We're peaches. <laughs> um. So if someone asked you the question after after meeting you, um. And, and, and ask you, so, so tell me about yourself. Mm-hmm. What is the first thing you would tell them about yourself? Before you answer, that might be your ziggurat. Mm-hmm. Okay? It may be that 
It may be your tower um, that you want to use to make a name for yourself. Yeah. So what would now I understand there are a certain level of exposure that you want to make to people that you don't want to make to everyone. I mean, there are some people I would give a, a more detailed answer to. Yeah. But what, what would you lead with? Let me ask you. Let me ask, what if, if you met somebody and say, I said, wow, OK, you seem pretty cool. So tell me about yourself. What would be the first thing that would come out of your mouth? Probably worship pastor. Yeah. <laughs> My vocation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And then the funny, that's like the last thing that I would say. I know, it's just one of those. I'm kind of embarrassed by it. I mean, I have to be honest with you, it's like, yeah, I'm a pastor. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I have to say it. Well, people know. change when they hear it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's why I don't, I can't stand that. Yeah. I, I, I can't stand that. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, what I, would you lead with? What would I What would I lead with? It's, it's, well, so tell me, I would say, um, I, I, you know, I tend to be a little bit more out with myself than other people and that doesn't make me right because right. sometimes I out some stuff about me that you just wish you never heard me <laughs> say about myself um, uh, I uh, uh, I think I may learn to love a leader I know it's something that we say here at Crosstown but part of it being here at Crosstown is because God worked it into me to work it into Crosstown mm -hmm. so it is part of my manifesto my personal manifesto does have to be a learned lover leader in my relationship with Christ. And mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that I would say, uh, I don't, would I, would I say I'm um, husband of a wife? But it, all I know is that if we took this into that point, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I would say I was Polly and Christopher and Jojo in Ireland's granddaddy. You know, if I was trying to be lighthearted, I'd maybe lead with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who did this? was um, in the movie, oh, that dude, Russell Crowe, is in that movie, uh, Gladiator. Yeah, Maximus Decimus. Yes, and yeah. when they chat, when he, he drops his mask and he says, <clears throat> who are you, and he lists off all these oh, things. Oh, yeah, to Commodus, yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the arena, yeah. Yeah, um, unfortunately, none of those things do he identify himself with, with a god. Yeah. And so we can be a lot of things, and those things can be ziggurats, yeah. ways of trying to make a name for ourselves. Not because I want to be better than other people, but I just want to belong. Mm -hmm. And we've just been told, well, then you've got to have identity. And identity, the bigger the identity, the more the belonging. And, and that kind of lie continues. Mm -hmm. So I think it is, a, I think it's an honest question to think, how would you answer the question? So tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. What would be the first thing? That would be out mm -hmm. of your mind, out, yeah. out of your mouth. So, yeah. Um, questions for this week: When the TV and the mirror say that you don't measure up, what do you believe? Because that's really where it's hardest. Mm -hmm. So, what do you really believe? When you sin, what do you believe? Because what you believe will determine what your restoration from that failure mm -hmm. will be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because you're still a child of God, there's no such thing as a better child. You're either somebody's offspring or you're not their offspring. <laughs> right. You can't be a better offspring. Yeah. You know, or better offspring. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. You did, can't. Did, it, did your girls ever ask you which one's your favorite? <laughs> oh, oh! They all think they know. They all think they know. That's exactly right. They all think they know. And to be honest with it, it, um, it kind of makes me sad. Yeah. Uh, because the thought that any of them would would think that they are less than my favorite. Yeah. Um, is, well, maybe they all think they're your their favorites to themselves. Yeah. And that they all individually. Well, I learned something from, uh, and that my mother was real good at that. I think every one of my brothers and my sister would say mm -hmm. that mom loved them best. I mean, she really was good at that. You could never pin her down. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, you know, like Jacob with uh, Joseph, bring him over here and all you rest of the boys suck. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, no wonder Jacob had such a problem. You know, I mean, he yeah. made the boy, the brothers hate his Hey yeah. Joseph, but uh, Mom was really good at that, and I hope I was was good at that as well. But I will tell you a story in closing on this: is that um, uh, when Cat uh, came to live with us, and she was like 15 years of age, it was the first time I 
uh, we had just she just come from foster care, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you, it, it's a sad sight. Uh, uh, this it was in the rain, and the van drove up, and out comes like five, fifteen year old children mm-hmm. with a plastic bag. They all have this black plastic garbage bag, and all their stuff is in it. Okay, um, they all have like the same teddy bear that they get because of when they yeah. go to um, uh, they go to the courts. The courts will try to make the child feel better with that. So I remember she got in the car, and uh, and as we're driving, I I said to her, I said, "Listen, um, you don't have to call me dad. Um, you can call me Mr. Paul." Um, I think I told her I preferred that you don't call me Pastor Paul because our relationship's not really that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, you can call me Mr. Rienzo if that makes you feel comfortable. Um, And she asked me, she said, can I call you Dad? Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, yeah, you can do that. I said, but there's no pressure to do that. Uh, It's not going to make me love you more or, you know. And, and I remember she said, I realized that, um, that you love me. And I said, why? She said, well, you have three other daughters, but you had to have them mm-hmm. because they were born to you. You chose me. Mm-hmm. And I remember how poignant that was. Mm-hmm. And it also made me realize that's closer to the Christian story. Uh, and that's what Paul's saying. It's like, I was born a Hebrew of Hebrews, of the tribe of Benjamin, and of the law. I was like, I got, I was born into this, this Jewish thing, this Abrahamic covenant thing. Mm-hmm. He says, I rejected all to have been chosen by Christ, by grace. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember the, uh, the beautiful lesson that she taught me in that mm-hmm. moment. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Great story about. No, that's powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that brings us to our end. Mm-hmm. Um, since it is kind of a, that was kind of heavy at the end there, mm-hmm. but but good heavy. Uh, mm-hmm. Why don't you pray for everyone, yeah. and particularly that maybe tonight, in all of it, that God has exposed the ziggurats. Um, it's not that God wants us to give up our careers or um, the cars that we drive or the house, but but. Are we, are, are things naming us instead of us naming things? Mm-hmm. And are we getting value from the wrong place? Mm-hmm. Why don't you pray? Father, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. And we thank you that, uh, like we just closed with, that you have chosen us and that our, and in this whole process, I just, my prayer is for everyone to have, they haven't been able to particularly identify what it might be that they would be able to do that in this moment. What those things are that are, are naming are naming us instead of us uh, naming them. And the things that are not first found in being a child of God. Of the living God who loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us, choosing us um, while we were yet sinners. And God, I pray that you would, as we discover what those things are, and they're probably already happening in our mind now, that you will help us to be able to put their in, put them in their proper place. Thank you that we are your children and that you have loved us with such a great love. May the eyes of our heart be enlightened to see what that is that you have for us. We love you. Bless us as we go this week. Continue to speak your love and your truth that our eyes may be enlightened to see them. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And don't forget to send in any theological questions or biblical questions that you may have, whether it's uh, personal questions or about uh, the theology of Crosstown, that uh, we'd love to entertain some of those. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do is we'll put out in some of the push notifications to let you know which one we'll be handling. Mm -hmm. Uh, We won't dedicate the whole time to it, but we'll dedicate uh, a significant amount of time to results to answer the question. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thanks.